All right. So the first thing we'll do is to set up our base web app and download some dependencies. Now, one thing before starting is that at the time of recording this video, there is a problem installing one of the components of Corento using Node 10. So we're going to use version 8. You can track this issue at the address github.com slash Corento slash bug tracker slash issues and the issue is the 260. As you can see, it's still open and there aren't a solution yet. Okay, so let's close this and open the terminal. I'm gonna create my project under the projects folder. So I'm gonna create, so I'm gonna create a new dir. I will call it WebRTC multi-party. I'm gonna navigate to the newly created folder. And I'm going to initialize this folder as a node project. Now I'm going to create another directory that I call public. And I'm going to create a couple of files inside. I need public index HTML. Also need public client.js. And I also need a server.js file in the root folder. Now we're gonna download some libraries for for this project. One is the adapter.js that we mentioned in the first chapter and also the current utils library. So we're gonna open a web browser and we're gonna go to webrtc.github.io slash samples slash src Oh, no, 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 it's uh, adapter slash adapter slash adapter dash latest dot JS. We're going to download this file in, in the case of Mac. I'm going to use command S and I'm going to store it directly in the project folder, which is WebRTC multiparty. I'm going to store it inside public. And we also need to download the current utils library. This is available at dot doc slash current dot read the docs dot io slash n slash latest slash features slash current lower dash or underscore utils underscore js dot html this is part of the of the current documentation and in here we can find a download link for the latest version of the file so i'm gonna click here and again i'm gonna make i'm gonna do command s and i'm gonna store the file inside the public folder of the newly created project Okay, so now I'm going to open a code editor. In my case, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, but you can use the one that you like the most. So now let's initialize our files. Let's start by index.html. Same as with the previous chapter, we're going to create a simple HTML file in the head. I'm going to put a title. Let's put WebRTC multi-party. Now, additionally, let's add some style here. First, I'm going to create an ID of meeting room. And let's make all divs inside that, that div have the text aligned to center. Also, let's create a class, video container. And in here, let's put the float property as left. 
let's also add add it here and finally again we're going to use the meeting room id this time we'll set the after selector let's put content also display as block and also let's add the clear boat style okay now let's add the body and in the body let's put an h1 with webrtc multi-party Now, as usual, we're gonna add our two dips. This one is this one. It will be room selection. It will be shown by default. So let's add the display block inline style. Okay, and in here, let's add a couple of labels. One for type username. Also, we need the input ID name type um, text. Let's add another one, and this will say say type uh, room name. We already have the user, so type room name. Let's also add the input ID room type text and a button for logging in id register and the button will say enter okay now let's add our meeting room in this case we also we only gonna need the id meeting room the style by default is going to be hidden so let's uh, display let's put none and in the but at the bottom of the file let's add all the scripts first we need a script for the adapter JS latest file that we previously download. Then let's add another one for the current utils file that we also download. Then let's add another one for the socket IO library. This is socket dot io slash socket dot io dot js and finally let's add another one for our client file and we're done now let's open the client js file and here we're simply gonna get the reference of the html tags um, at this point, I'm guessing you already know how to do this. So I will speed up the video and add all the reference here. Make sure you do the same in your project. Okay, now let's add some additional variables that we will use when establishing a call. Let's put variables. And in here we have a variable for the room name another one for the username and another one for the participants this will be an empty object so we're done with the client.js and now let's open the server.js in here we're gonna initialize a simple express application so let's add a constant for the express module wire 
express another constant for our app express constructor now a variable for an HTTP server that will require the HTTP node module calling the server constructor and passing the app and let's also use another library called minimist this library will allow us to send to set some values as a parameter at execution time so let's require the minimist package but, uh, now before making any progress let's install such libraries so we're going to put npm install express and also minimist okay next let's define the arguments and here we're going to use minimist to get the the, the, the arguments that were passed at, at, at execution time we're going to use a slice to get the first two and let's set some default some default values this will be AES which is application server the URI, URI the UD which will be HTTP localhost 3000 and also another variable which is the web socket per the web socket server which will be double s slash slash localhost eight 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 like that slash currento this will be the address of our currento server that we will run using docker we will talk about that in a few lessons by now let's just keep this defined as is now let's continue with some basic express code for serving the static folder which is the public folder in this case so let's add public and let's initialize let's start lesson for request using the http server in the port 3000 let's add an anonymous function here to show a friendly message saying that the app is running okay so that's it for our basic web application in the next section we'll cover the signaling layer when you're ready move to the next lesson